So let's talk about my truck. I bought this truck um, September of 2020. Uh, I had been saving. I wanted to get something new. wasn't sure what I wanted. I was kind of bouncing back and forth to win a truck and a Jeep Grand Cherokee because I really like the Grand Cherokees. Um, and I found that trucks were easier to find. Plus, uh, with more trucks in stock, then I could find more features that I wanted. So I started, you know, building a list of things that I'd really like to have and then things that it might absolutely must have. And, um, you know, a lot of those boxes were checked when I found that truck. Um, so I went, checked it out, test drove it, liked it, uh, paid cash, just bought it. And that was the first vehicle I ever bought that I just paid cash for. And it was really an accomplishment. It was a, it was a milestone. It was amazing. And um, I've held on to that truck for this long because, you know, it was the first vehicle I ever bought with cash. And it was a pretty dang good truck. I mean, I had no issues with it. Um, and really, the biggest factor that took me to that truck versus a gas truck was the fact that it was diesel. I didn't care how good the gas mileage was. I didn't care, or diesel mileage. <laughs> I didn't care any of that. Um, I didn't care about a lot of power because I wasn't expecting to tow anything at the time. Uh, so I was just like, you know, this would be a really cool truck and it gets good gas mileage and it's a diesel. So I bought it and um, we're talking, we're talking back when diesel was like $2.98 a gallon. So, you know, there was that. I drove that truck so much. It has 24,000 miles on it as of right now. And um, if you asked me that question about four months ago, it would have had about 24,000 miles on it. So I haven't driven it in four months. Um, gas prices, diesel prices have gone out the roof over $5 a gallon. While regular gas is going back down, diesel is still going up. And I have an electric car, so I'm gonna drive electric while I can because it's just so much cheaper. So, um, yeah. At the time, well, not last year sometime, I had considered replacing the truck. Um, and what I really wanted to do last year around this time was uh, buy a fifth wheel RV and do some traveling. I wanted to travel I have always wanted to go around the country, um, you know, out to Colorado and then down to Arizona and over to New uh, Nevada and up through Idaho, Utah, Montana, and then back over across the top states, over to Minnesota, back down, maybe over to Ohio and then back down to North Carolina. I thought that'd be a really fun trip. And I expected that it would take at least a month to do. Uh, you know, because we want to obviously have fun and sightsee. And I did not order food. And I just realized that. Freaking A. Anyway, <laughs> we wanted to have stuff to do and sightsee and all that. And, um, you know, it would take at least a month. And the original plan was to just grab hotels along the whole way. And I thought, that, that gets expensive. If I had an RV, not only would I have a solid place every night with my own sheets and not somebody else's mess, but like, you know, I wouldn't have to pack my stuff up every night and move it to a new location. I'd just stay in the RV and we would pull it behind us and off we'd go. So um, that's what I wanted to do. And so I went to the Ford place and I ordered a 2022 F350 Dually Limited. And um, my RAM is a limited, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I like the features and knickknacks and all that. So, um, <laughs> side note, where it gets really confusing, uh, Ford does limited on their truck, which means the highest trim, but limited on their Explorer means like one of the lower trims. And same with RAM, RAM on their truck, limited means the highest trim, but on the Jeep means one of the lower trims. Who knows? Anyway. <laughs> Um, so I ordered that truck in November of 21, uh, thinking, you know, eh, probably around March I'll have it and we'll, you know, we'll look into, do we want to get the RV? How do we want to do this? Um, that did not pan out the way I thought it would. Uh, here we are, August, it's about to be August 
I still don't have the truck. However, I did get notification that it's being built now and I'm not so sure I want it now. I mean, I, I've, I've pretty much all but changed my mind on this entire situation because diesel is over $5 a gallon. And then you're talking about, you know, I'm moving from an eco diesel that gets 30 miles per gallon on the highway to, you know, a turbo diesel, they're all turbo, but you know what I mean? Power stroke that gets like 16 miles per gallon on a good day. And then when you put a trailer behind it, we're talking more like 10 or nine or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not good. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to pull in here and order my food. We'll continue this conversation afterward. So anyway, plans change. And, um, I ended up basically deciding that I don't even want the truck anymore. I mean, it would be nice, but I already don't drive my current truck because of you know, the cost of diesel. And this one's gonna get even worse mileage. I like to say gas mileage, but I think that's kind of the incorrect way to say it. Um, this one's going to get even worse gas mileage. Um, so I don't know that I even want it. So I've let, I let the dealer know that, you know, I, I don't think I want this truck anymore. So if you need to cancel it, cancel it or whatever. And obviously they were like, no, no, we'll take it and sell it. Yeah, I know you will, <laughs> but, um, that's fine. <clears throat> whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the plan changed several months ago to wanting a Rivian. Rivian is the new electric pickup truck that's out today. And, um, well, they're, they're coming and who knows. Um, the thing with Rivian is, you know, people ordered in 2018 and still don't have their trucks. But, well, maybe it's 2019. But then you get people who ordered, you know, last December who already have their trucks. And it's like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> um, what, what kind of game are you guys playing? with these trucks uh, and there's been a lot of talk around it there's been people complaining oh you know they're not doing it right they're skipping the line well I ordered mine in December so I'm you know I'm kind of in between I'm like hey if you're if you're delivering trucks ordered in December I'll take it and that was my plan I wanted Rivian um talked about it looked at them that was that was the new plan I like my electric cars I have no problems with the electric cars and and you know I'm I feel like you start with a Tesla. You start with the massive supercharging network where you can go anywhere and do anything and, and that's it. And if you're if you're not in for a challenge or you're not really up with technology and you're not so sure about all this, Tesla is where you need to stay because they have it. The car knows it's not gonna let you run out of fuel, fuel gas, electric, whatever. It's not gonna let you run out. Um, if you navigate somewhere, the car will say, hey, you need to stop here, here, and here, or you're not gonna make it. It's pretty simple. And it will navigate you to those places. And if you have navigate on autopilot, it will take the exit to get you there where you need to go. Um, it's a good car. It's a really good car. I mean, for the technology, for what's out there competing, it is the best. And if that's what you want, this is where you're at. But me, I like to experiment. I like to play with things. I like to test things. I like to learn things. And so my interest was piqued and I rented a Mustang Mach-E just because it's different. Let's try it out. And I, I got a chance to try using the Electrify America network and it really wasn't that bad considering. And I thought, you know, I, I would like to try something that doesn't have access to the supercharger network just to see like what else is out there so Rivian was it uh, that was that was the place to go and um, I ordered three trucks through Rivian just because um, I went three different configurations thinking you know if one particular configuration is built before the other two maybe they'll call me and I'll get it instead obviously there's one that I really want one that I would be okay with and one that's like eh, I guess you know um, but that's, that's how I did that. And, um, okay, my car does not want to move over. There we go. But the uncertainty of when I may actually get the truck is annoying 
Uh, you never know. You never know when uh, they're going to actually make it and ship it to me. I mean, at this point, they may do orders that were placed last month versus mine. So, um, you know, I don't know. There's no way of knowing. So, it's it's kind of a mess. So, um, you think like, well, what else, what else is out there that I would want? I don't like anything else out there. Um, I, I've looked at the Hummer EV. No, no, absolutely not. Um, the, te the Cybertruck is not out yet, and that's still Tesla. I mean, that would be fine. I have no problems with Tesla. It's just that I wanted to try something different. Um, so, probably not on the Cybertruck. I have one reserved, but who knows when that's actually going to be made. So, you know, what's $100? You know, you put up $100, make a deposit. Now you have a reservation. Who cares? You know, you can cancel it and get your money back at any time. So it's not like I'm committing to buy anything here. So, um, so yeah, I have a, a Cybertruck on order as well. And um, I also have an, a, Del a DeLorean on order, but that's, I'll probably never do that. It was just like, it's a DeLorean. Anyway, um, so yeah, the options for electric trucks out there are kind of slim and, uh, well, the only one I didn't mention is the Ford Lightning, and I hated the Lightning. I, the thing is, I drove the Mustang Mach-E. I understand the Lightning is the same thing. It's the same platform. It's just bigger and better. You know, it's, it's based on the truck, but the software is still the same. The problems I had with the Mach-E was that it provides no information. When you plug it in, you don't know how many amps you're drawing, how many volts, how many kilowatt, nothing. You get no information. You get, hey, I'm plugged in. I'll be done in 40 hours. And that's it. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, and I know the truck's the same deal. It's, it's the same story. So um, I don't want I didn't want that. I wanted more information. I mean, and that could be fixed with a simple software update. The truck itself is a good design. It's a nice full-size truck, which is probably the only full-size truck you can get in electric right now. Um, but without the software that, you know, gives the nerdy little stats, I don't like it. Uh, I, I don't like having plugging in somewhere and not knowing. Most, most fast chargers will have a screen to tell you how fast you're charging, but I did find one the other day in my search of fast chargers, and uh, it didn't have a screen. It was just like blinking lights to show you that it's charging, and you have no clue how fast you're charging. What, what do you do? You know, what do you do there? You don't know if you don't know if you're getting four kilowatt or 40 kilowatt, you know, like one's a waste of time. The other one's an even bigger waste of time. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't like the lightning because of the stats that it doesn't give, but with some recent research, uh, my local dealership got a lightning in the platinum trim and, uh, I had to go look at it. I was like, you know, well, why not? I looked at it, and one thing that really intrigued me was the onboard power. 7.2 kilowatt inverter uh, that you can hook a 30 amp plug to, or you can hook several 20 amp plugs to. <clears throat> I mean, obviously not draw that much at one time, but you know what I mean. And um, that, that interested me because... I don't know, I guess I just completely overlooked the fact that it had onboard power, and um, it just never really occurred to me that that was a thing until I went and looked at it, and I was like, oh wow, like I, I could potentially plug my house into this thing if the power goes out for 16 to 18 hours. Like, that was based on my own math, not because anybody told me that, but, um, so it may be wrong, but, um, yeah. That, that would be pretty cool. We, we actually do have a generator inlet in our house, and we have a backup generator for when the power goes out. The problem is, um, it's so loud. <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for running it, because I obviously I have neighbors all the way around me, and it's just so loud. And the generator inlet is actually on the side of the house where the neighbor's house is. Like, there's, there's forest on the other side where there's no houses or anything. That wouldn't be a problem but the inlet is in between the two houses. And so there's no way they're sleeping if I have that running. So I definitely don't run it at night. And during the day, I mean, do you really need power? I mean, you know, what would you need power for during the day? Maybe a refrigerator, that's about it. 
and I have another inverter generator for that that is super quiet. So I run it for the, for the refrigerator. There's no reason for the big whole home generator. It can't run the air conditioner. So, you know, like there's no point in having it. So, um, it would be super cool if the Ford Lightning could power the whole house. Maybe even the air conditioner, dare I say. So that, that kind of got my interest peaked about the Ford F-150 Lightning. Now, obviously, you know me, I only want the Platinum trim because that's the highest trim you can get on it, and it just seemed like the better deal overall. So, um, like I said, the Ford Place had one, and I was like, that's super interesting. I'm interested. Um, and went and looked at it, and it just uh, it sold before I could even <laughs> talk about buying it. So um, didn't work out, but, um, I was so tempted, you know, like I usually when I make a big purchase, I like to think about it for 24 hours. And if I still think it's a good idea in 24 hours, then well, it's probably a good idea. Um, and, and in that particular instance, I was like, eh, you know, I don't know. I'm not hundred percent sold on it. I haven't had my 24 hours to think about it. I don't know. But I knew that if I didn't pull the trigger right then and there, it was gone. And it was gone before I even had that chance. So, um, you know, my, my worst case scenario was like, if I don't like it, if I get it and I just absolutely hate it, um, I can flip it. I can make a profit on it. And, you know, that, that would be cool and all, but I also want to like it because, you know, I'm going to have to trade my RAM to get it. I don't have $100,000 laying around. So I'll have to trade the RAM in order to buy anything new. So that didn't pan out. And so I started looking to see, you know, if I could find one locally that um, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be marked up stupidly high. I'm willing to pay MSRP and that's pretty much it. Um, so far I've had no luck. I, I found two, but they are both demo models and they said that I could buy it in December. And I'm like, well, that's cool hit me up in December, we'll talk about it, but I don't know if that's going to actually pan out, so, you know, anyway, um, the order banks are supposed to or open in two weeks, and I may try to jump on that and get an order in, you know, like I say, you can always place an order, if you back out, it, you can just back out, I mean, worst case, you lose $100, but I think they actually refund that, so, you know, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see where that goes. And, um, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's, that's with my Ram. That's kind of the plan right now. Um, I, I do still want the Rivian. I'm just now kind of disappointed that it doesn't have onboard power because that, that, um, inverter would be really nice. Uh, and, and it may not even work. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I can't power my whole house. I, that's all something we'll have to figure out a long time, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But that's, that's where we're at right now. I have the dually on order. I'm probably going to end up, you know, telling them no. At this point, they said, you know, wait till it comes in, come look at it, see if it's what you want to do. I mean, I've bought a ton of accessories for this truck, uh, because that was what I was expecting on doing. And now it's not the plan anymore. And I mean, I could, I could take the truck, and just hold on to it for a few years and then do the camper thing and already have the truck. But the problem with that is, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff they've been removing out of these trucks because of chip shortages. And this truck has all this stuff removed. It's not a limited anymore. It's a platinum because it doesn't have half the stuff a limited is supposed to have. That was one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to drop it in the first place. And I think that's ultimately what got my mind changed of the whole, whole deal because it was like, you know, I, Right now is not a good time to buy a vehicle. I knew that. And apparently now's not a good time to order one either. Now, funny story, the Platinum Lightning doesn't have a single thing removed. They are still showing up at dealerships right now without a single thing removed. Um, Platinum is the highest level you can go on the Lightning, but whatever. All right, well, I've talked long enough. I'm gonna get my food now.